It's really good to be with you once more uh, to share uh, on the scriptures of the 23rd Sunday. It so happens that it's also we're celebrating the feast of St. Nicholas of Tolentino, our patron saint that Sunday. And uh, so if I stray a little in the reflections, uh, you may understand why. But I think the readings are quite appropriate for the feast of this um, healing saint and this saint who really addressed the issues of poverty um, uh, in a very different kind of culture and context centuries ago. Um, but I'll leave that aside for the moment. But just to ask you to remember to pray <clears throat> for the work and mission of our parish seeking to be good news to the poor uh, in the inner city of Bristol and a place of welcome for strangers those seeking safe refuge and asylum. Just pray for our work. Thank you. So, we hear a very wonderful, we, as you say, last week we returned to uh, Mark's Gospel. And we have today, in this passage from the Gospel, um, one of the great healings of Jesus. He he is in pagan country. He's not among his Jewish people. So there he brings healing, not just to those who are fellow believers, but he brings healing to the rest of the world as well. And we need to remember that straight away, that the mission of the church is not just to minister to the members of the church, it's not even primarily to minister to the members of the church. It is for the church, the body of Christ, to reach out into the world and bring the healing presence, the healing peace, the healing action of God into the wider world beyond ourselves. That's fundamental. That's being a missionary church instead of rather an enclosed religious club. So, there he is walking through the Decapolis region, um, making his way, uh, the, by the way of Sidon, towards the Sea of Galilee, in the heart of a non-Jewish community. And they bring a man deaf, a man mute. They bring... Now, you need to know that at the time, um, being deaf and mute was a sign of great punishment from God. That's how it was understood. You know, poverty was seen as, uh, as uh, also something of a curse, was seen as a punishment from God. Riches, wealth, health were all seen as the blessings of God. However, Jesus turns that upside down, and we need to remember that, particularly when we hear stories of gospel, prosperity gospel being preached, which is really alien to the New Testament, utterly alien to Jesus. So here is Jesus. He's, they bring him out of the, to the, in the midst of the crowd, this deaf man, and they ask him to lay his hands on them, on him. He takes him away from the crowd. Now, this is very significant in Mark's Gospel. The crowd here represent that which deafens us, that which silences us. He takes him, this man away from the crowd in order to heal him, to give him back his voice, to let him listen with new ears to the world around him. This is a physical healing because Jesus is, uh, is as much given to our physical needs as to our spiritual needs. But it also speaks to us and use the use of the word, the Aramaic word, afeta, be opened. 
that's a key word for us. We need to think about what does that mean in our context? What are we not open to? What do we not have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a voice to speak for in our world? Where are the areas of our lives that are closed, that are deaf to the cries of our common home, the earth, deaf to the cries of the poor, not giving voice to the desperation that, for instance, we've seen on our screens at Kabul airport, but is repeated in other ways. You know, all the people crossing the Mediterranean, crossing the English Channel, searching for a place of freedom and of hope where they can now begin to, their lives can begin to flourish. <clears throat> Do we listen to their cries? Do we have eyes to see their pain? And do we have a voice to cry out for them? And Jesus comes to heal us. We as a church need healing so that we will see with the eyes of Christ. We will listen with the ears of Christ and we will speak with the voice of Christ and we'll serve with the hands of Christ and we'll love with the heart of Christ. And so he heals away from the crowd because so often we, we take refuge in the crowd. We don't want to stand out. We don't want to be different. And yet we as Christians are called, uh, in the words of, um, uh, of a, a famous writer, we are called to walk by a different drumbeat. We are called to walk the way of Christ. We're called not to take, not to hide in a crowd. The power of social media, the power of the press, the power to, uh, and the power of our different cultures can often deafen us to the cries of the poor, the discriminated, the marginalized. We need to be open to new ways of being church. We need to be open to new forms of mission. We need to be open to areas of, of mission and moral decision-making that we are unfamiliar with. Climate change is a classic example now because it's create, it has introduced us to a whole new area of ethics, our responsibility for future generations, our responsibility to change our lifestyle in the here and now so that we can pass on to new generations a sustainable world. The, the, the 23rd Sunday this year, the first Sunday in September, is Creation Sunday. It's the beginning of the new season of creation that uh, Pope Francis launched last year that starts on the 1st of September. I hope in our liturgies and our masses that will be reflected because the greatest global crisis facing our world today is precisely climate change. Are we deaf? to the cry of our common home, the earth, are we deaf to the poor of the earth, of the world? So be open. The letter of St. James relates in many ways to that. Often the second reading in ordinary time doesn't have much relationship with the gospel or the first reading in our mass. But very often we can find connections, and I find a really powerful connection in this letter from, of St. James. Uh, the letter of St. James is probably the most Jewish of all the documents, thoroughly rooted in the Jewish tradition um, in the New Testament. 
it's a bit similar to Matthew's gospel in that way, but even more so. And James is speaking of his experience, not only in the synagogue, which you'd be very familiar with, but also in the Christian community. Do not try to combine faith in Jesus Christ, our glorified Lord, with the making of distinctions between classes of people. Suppose someone comes into your synagogue beautifully dressed, gold ring on. At the same time, a poor man comes with shabby clothes. You take notice of the dress, best dressed man. Say, come, take your seat here. And then to the poor, say, you stand over there somewhere. As Jesus would say, this must not happen among you. The last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and the humble will be exalted. Listen, my dear brothers, it was those who were poor according to the world that God chose. You can think of the apostles, think of Jesus, think of Mary, coming from the impoverished community of Nazareth, the marginalized community of Galilee. Chose to be rich in faith, and to be the heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him. One of the prayers of the church speaks of how the poor have first place in the kingdom of God. And, and in this passage, we have very clearly stated God's preferential option for the poor. The lame, the, the, the deaf man, the deaf and mute man, in the gospel represents the poor of the world because of course uh, he could only survive by begging his life would be miserable just begging waiting on the charity of others when jesus heals him he opens him up to a new responsibility to a new kind of life he restores him to mainstream society. He brings him from the margins and places him at a place where he can now exercise his creativity. That's what the healing ministry of the church is meant to be. And that's what the, the prophetic action for justice needs to be. And in the prophet Isaiah, we have this wonderful vision of the Lord, the Lord your God is coming. And then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unsealed, the lame shall leap like the deer, the tongues of the dumb sing for joy. All those things that are seen as curses, as punishments of God, are transformed, healed, so that people can become creative once more, can rejoice, can enter into the joy of their humanity. And then goes on to speak of creation, Isaiah does, for water gushes in the desert, streams in the wasteland, the scorched earth becomes a lake, the parched land springs of water. We can think of the extremes of climate uh, that have been caused by climate change, extreme weather conditions that have caused, um, on the one hand, flooding, and on the other hand, the wildfires, um, parched land super hot temperatures which are killing off people because we can't tolerate such high temperatures these are all the warning signs have we got eyes to see have we got ears to hear and do we have a voice to speak up for our suffering planet on this coming creation sunday recognize the word of God challenging us to be opened, to be open in new ways to a new sense of mission where we are called to heal the earth itself by taking decisive action and pressing our governments, particularly with COP26 coming shortly in October, to press our governments really to address the issues with urgency, tenacity, and with a cutting edge, 
And that means doing that in our own lives, in our own lifestyles. So this beautiful word of God for us on this Sunday, which at one level is very comforting and another level is very disturbing, disturbing us about how we are deaf, disturbing us of how we keep silent when we should shout aloud and echo the cries of the earth, the cries of the poor. So I'd like to finish this reflection with <clears throat> firstly um, this beautiful prayer I came across. And it's about listening, thinking, be opened. Listen to the water, air and earth, creation's treasure store. They're wounded for want of being listened to. They cry and too few hear. They slowly die and too few mourn. And yet those who give attention, who stretch both hands to touch, embrace and tend, through those who marvel, reverence and kneel, and cup, of, cup the water, feel the breath of heaven, hear the humming earth, a healing comes, and there are seeds of hope. There is tomorrow germinating in today. Listen to the stories, dreams, and thoughts of those who have no voice. They're wounded for want of being listened to. They cry and too few hear. They slowly die and too few mourn. And yet, Though through those who give attention, who stretch both hands to touch, embrace, receive. Those through those who labor, claim their dignity and drink the cup of suffering, breathe winds of change and earth their dreams in struggle. Healing comes and there are seeds of hope and there is tomorrow germinating in today. Be still, be just, sharing in their truth, in finding them, you find yourself. And a blessing issued by Cafford <clears throat> for this season of creation. Walk beside us, Lord, in the cool of the day, in the garden you have created as our common home. Walk beside us, Lord, as the cries of the forest pierce the dawn and the flames rip through our common home. Grant us courage, Lord, as we walk beside all those who struggle to protect our common home. Grant us hope, Lord, and the vision to walk dark paths in the light of a single sunbeam. Grant us grace, Lord, to put the flourishing of all people and the wonder of your creation at the heart of all we do, as we strive to be guardians of our common home. St. Francis of Assisi, pray for us. St. Nicholas of Tolentino, pray for us. And may the blessing, peace and love of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit come down upon you. Open your ears, your eyes and your voices to build a new and better world. Amen. Thank you, everybody, and have a blessed Creation Sunday. <laughs>